are listening to the True Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. All right, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining me for Secrets Revealed. We're going to take things down a little bit different path today, and we're going to talk to both my friends Dolores Lumberg and Fritz Springmeyer and uh, about Fritz's current projects and things that he's been involved in and and wanting to share as far as listening audience and and what it means you know as far as our being the last generation living the what seems to be the end of days because huh? there's so much news occurring so very quickly and at an accelerated pace in the scriptures it talks about um the days being shor- shortened or else there would be no flesh left. And it certainly seems with the GMOs and the Fukushima still ongoing and things of that nature that every day and every moment is pressing as far as, um, you know, being able to embrace life and, um, and, and do what we can. I know I don't like to waste any time, and I know that, uh, Fritz also is very busy in all the work that he does, so he's going to share with us, and I'm honored to have him uh, and Dolores here with me this evening, um, all the things that he's been up to as of late. And many of you are aware of his work on the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati and the many um, interviews and and audiences that he has compelled with all of his research and information. So I'm honored to have both of you here with me this evening, and I thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, Dolores, you said you wanted to bring something forth, and then we can uh, bring yes. Fritz on. Hi, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to, to tonight's program. <laughs> I hope it's extremely enlightening. Um, I hope that it demonstrates the urgency by which we need to open our eyes and i would just ask that the heavenly father be with us this evening that he opens eyes that need to be opened that he opens hearts that need to be opened and he he opens minds to see these these things that are happening um in today and and why it's important to us all and and let me introduce my soulmate Fritz Springmeyer this evening. Fritz, thank you. Hello, for us. <laughs> hello, all you listeners out there. <laughs> um, so we we were talking earlier about the um, importance of of mind control and and I just wanted to um, get some direct information out and 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 thought that asking a few questions might be the most expedient way to do that. So let me just go ahead and say, Fritz, why should Christians take a stronger role in becoming aware of mind control? Well, the mind control is prevalent everywhere. Although people are told that MPD, which is now called DID, is very rare, it isn't at all. It's spread throughout the churches. In fact, the Churches are a big part of of the fronts that are doing the programming. And so I was just visiting with some Christians today, and they had a prayer ministry, and they discovered that half of the people in their prayer healing ministry were programmed multiples. And what this means is, is we have a lot of ministers, and we have a lot of people in our church that the front of their minds are Christians, but they're actually, what you see is not what you get. And this is directly related to that scripture that says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And so these people were talking about their pastor. There's actually this woman who's a Satanist, but she's in their church and and they, they're they trying to explain to their, their minister that she's not what she appears to be. And so it's very important for Christians to understand that the, this mind control allows the 
enemy to do things undetected. So, Fritz, could you describe to me the typical person who could be mind controlled? Well, it goes across the spectrum. It's not, it used to be a couple hundred years ago that this kind of mind control was done by the elite Illuminati families uh, to their own children. But now this thing's proliferated. You can, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what country you are. It's gone everywhere. So it's, it's really uh, a, a lot more difficult to just put some kind of um, uh, a label on who might or might not be. Um, could you describe for me a little bit about what the typical symptoms could be of mind control if you suspected that a family member or friend were being victimized? Well, people that have inconsistent behavior, uh, that's a clue. Uh, if the person themselves is missing time, that can be a clue. Uh, there's... There's just a, a whole host of little tiny clues that taken uh, by themselves don't mean a lot. But, uh, you know, to, uh, typically today, uh, MPD, which is multiple personality disorder, which has been relabeled DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, typically it's being misdiagnosed with uh for instance, they're calling people bipolar or borderline or schizophrenic or schizoaffective. They're, they're putting all these labels, mislabels, on what's actually uh, this trauma-based mind control. So could you describe to me how many types of mind control there are? Well, yeah... It, the type of mind control I've just been talking about, the trauma-based total mind control, is is a type of mind control that turns a person into a human robot, but creates a human front that's really good, that has a good front. But then there's mass mind control that's done to the general population. If you think about it, who built our our whole worldview and frame of reference. From the time we're born, we have other people that are telling us this and that and building our, our frame of reference. So uh, society in general has a very low-grade type of mind control, the matrix, as they call it. And where do you think we would see, or where is the prevalence of mind control seen in society, and who are the most susceptible to be mind controlled? Well, if your parents are like in the CIA or the FBI, or if your parents are in the military, especially high level um, uh, military officers then the, their children have a high uh, likelihood of being subjected to this type of mind control. If uh, you belong to one of these bloodlines, and, and you know, uh, I wrote this book, Bloodlines of the Illuminati, which, which uh, actually puts names and faces to who these people are. And if you're part of one of these uh, bloodline families, like let's say you're, you know, Hillary Clinton, or let's say you're George Bush, you know, these are the type of families I, I write about in that bloodlines book. And, uh, so our la latest president, George Bush, uh, the, the junior one, he was a programmed multiple. That's why sometimes he would make really stupid statements you know, he would switch personalities and some of his personalities were were not really in touch with the world and they would make really corny statements. Well, um, that sounds like about the conclusion of most of the con real pertinent questions I wanted to get out. And if you want to just expand on that, um, Zen, thank you so much for... <clears throat> 
for inviting us on. And I'm going to let you and Fritz take over from here. And God bless everyone. And again, thanks for tuning in today. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And um, I will. Uh, I think you've got it playing in the, um, here in the reverb. But anyways, um, I just wanted to read something from a, a Hopi prophecy, which is interesting because it talks about some of the things that you were talking about. And then after I read this, I'll get you to comment, Prince, and then we'll go into uh, this in more detail because this is a, a, a critical issue and it's something that people don't have the professional expertise to really speak on in a very um, elaborate way. And it's something that is affecting a lot of people. Um, I've been recently blessed to do shows also with Carolyn Hamlet and Dan Duvall, who Dan works on this side of things as, as like similar to what you're doing. Um, and also Carolyn, she was uh, one of these, you know, born from one of these Illuminati families. And um, together they've created the, the bride ministries dot com, I believe. And they are now doing outreach to teach others so that they can also um, deal with the prevalence, the influx of individuals that are awakening to such programming. Um, and so let me read this real quick and then we'll go into it a little bit further. It says this, many will appear to have lost their souls in these final days. So intense will the nature of the changes be that those who are weak in spiritual awareness will go insane. Life will be so bad in the cities that many will choose to leave this plane, some in whole groups. It will be a very hard time for women with, with children, for they will be shunned, and many of the children in these times will be unnatural, some being from the stars, some from past worlds. Some will even be created by man in an unnatural manner and will be soulless. Many of the people in this time will be empty in spirit and have no life force in their eyes. Uh -huh. They will walk around as ghosts in the cities through canyons which they have constructed and man-made mountains. Those that walk through these places will be very heavy in their walk. It will appear almost painful as they take each step because of their disconnection from spirit. Uh, one last passage here. Others will have great deformities both in mind and upon their bodies. There will be those who would walk in the body that are not from this reality. For many of the gateways that once protected us will be opened. There will be much confusion. Confusion between the sexes and children and even their elders. Life will get very perverted and there will be little social order in these times. Many will ask for the mountains themselves to fall upon them just to end their misery. So still others will appear as if untouched by what is occurring. It reminds me of the Revelation 6, the passage where the rich men are in their deep underground bases and they ask the rocks to fall upon them to hide them from the face of the land, that last particular passage. But, um, would you mind um, commenting on this particular, you know, these few passages, and and then we can go into this further? Well, it definitely describes our times, and we're going to get increasingly drawn towards what it's describing. Um, it, it's it's like uh, each generation gets crazier and crazier, and gets closer and closer to. Uh, the uh, being extreme in the things that you described, I one of the things that I've been doing besides working with the mind control, the trauma-based mind control, is I've been going back to college, so I'm rubbing shoulders with this millennial generation, right? And you can see a lot of the things that you're describing in this generation, which is. I've just been kind of shocked by some of the things I've been seeing. My generation had its share of problems, but the problems have gotten worse. They're definitely headed in the direction that that, that prophecy is describing. 
It certainly seems to be the sign of the times. And so, um, and you know, it's not even difficult. And then with all the pharmaceuticals that are being pumped upon people, the fluoride in the water, uh, the aspartame in the food, I mean, there's just so much. You know, the cell phones that people are using for hours and hours and hours and exposing their brains to radiation and, uh, I mean, the, the challenges are the, the chemtrails, the genetically modified foods. The challenges are bombarding people and life from all sides. And the uh, the effects of all of these things compounded upon each other um, is really uncalculable. And there are so many people that are dying prematurely. Um, and we see the prevalence of Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, spec- Asperger spectrum disorders in young children, um, disease being perpetuated by vaccines, and all of these things. Um, for people that don't understand that there is this other bloodline which is waging war upon the sons of Adam, and don't understand how it is that the New World Order is, like with the report from Iron Mountain, um, in agreement to bring the world to a place where they could uh, allow world peace. They talked about how they would have to create mechanisms to replace the, the destruction and the depopulation that war has served historically through time and uh, space to call the masses and to, you know, keep, keep us down supposedly to a manageable size for them to continue and perpetuate the new world order, the one world, um, the one world order and the world government and police state measures and all of that. Um, I know you wrote your book a, a very long time ago Um and and so you were really ahead of the forefront on all of these things, which also is what, in my opinion, made you a target for trumped up charges in order to kind of disappear you from the public knowledge and consciousness so that, you know, um, so that you're and also to discredit you as a messenger and to discredit your story and the things that you were uh, bringing forth. So. I want to give you a chance to talk about some of your books, and if you would um, go into you know a little more detail with the thirteen bloodlines of the Illuminati, since that is the one that you're very well known, world renowned, I would say, uh, for in your efforts, and uh, possibly that would be the one that got you in trouble with them. Um, if you would uh, to detail a little more on all this, Fritz. Yeah, let me cover a number of things that you mentioned just now. First, uh, you know, it says in the Word of God in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And they really have. You know, they th- like you say, they threw me into prison to discredit me. But by throwing me into prison, it showed that I obviously wasn't uh, all these things that my detractors have been saying of me, they were saying, oh, Fritz is Illuminati. He couldn't know all this unless he was an insider. Fritz is CIA. Well, it disproved all of those people. And also, while they got me out of the picture, the, the timing was such that the Internet was was blooming. And my my messages, my the things I had been saying, spread more widely while I was in prison without me being involved than when I was out here on the outside. So, you know, it backfired. And and I give God the credit for that because God says he's going to bring good out of bad. And he has, you know, yes. they took this, this wonderful man who was sinless and they tortured him. And, and yet God took what everybody thought was a bad thing. And he, made a blessing out of it. And and so the life of Christ is proof that God can turn anything bad into good. Now, you right. mentioned some books there. And actually, while we're on the subject of mind control, I want to talk 
uh, just briefly that I have two major books on mind control that are not well known out there by people. The first one, the Illuminati formula used to create an undetectable total mind controlled slave, which I call the formula book for short. And its sequel is Deeper Insights. The formula book's 600 pages and the Deeper Insights, no, excuse me, the formula book's 500 pages and the Deeper Insights book's 600 pages. These are groundbreaking books that no one has come along and even written anything that compares to them. And they're very important for people to understand the mind control. You know, we've been talking about the trauma-based mind control today, and um, we just barely scratched the surface on this subject. So if people really want to understand it, and it's a very, very important subject, it's happening all around us, our friends, our family, and who knows what, Maybe, you know, our leaders are, are subjected to this trauma-based mind control. So if people want to know more about this, they need to go to my website, which is pintracks.com, and get this. And uh, so that's the how. That's how they're doing all of this stuff. Um, but the Bloodlines of the Illuminati book that you talked about, that's the who. Because right. that's important, too, because a lot of times, you know, I know you, you know what I'm talking about, and so do the listeners. You hear these, what they call conspiracy theorists out there, and they'll be saying, well, they did this, they're doing this, they, they, they. They always use this pronoun, they, but, but then somebody who's listening, who's a skeptic, comes along and says, well, you keep saying they, but who's the they? Well, if, if anybody throws that question at you and asks, well, who's the they? Hey, I answered it. That's what my Bloodlines of the Illuminati book is. And um, in fact, I had something similar to that ha happen. I was I was running a Christian print shop and my boss said, Fritz, who's the they? You know, so that book is that answer to that question. So that now if people are saying they are doing this or they are that doing that, you know, they are Kim trailing us and they are mind controlling us and then somebody comes along and goes well that's awful vague i mean it's easy to say but who is the they well you read my my bloodlines of the illuminati book and i'll break it down for you i'll show you who's the they and um how they you know there's certain certain uh people out there that realize the power of the corporations so they'll say, well, the corporations are running things. But if you look at who's controlling the corporations, it's an interlocking directorate of an elite group that know each other, that go to the same clubs, you know. And who's that group? Well, I break it down for people that the the true insiders, the true decision makers, they're these Illuminati people. And then there's other people, the network that surround them that just want to be in on what they think is a good thing. Some people think that, you know, you want to be by the winning team. I've had some people tell me, okay, well, I want to, I want to, I want to support the new world order because they're the winning team. <coughs> well, <laughs> you and I know that that's not the way it is. Right. Right. But, uh, not in know, the end, <laughs> you know, Further along, they'll they'll know. But mm -hmm. for right now, they're deluded. They're walking around in the matrix. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I wanted to talk to you about some of the things you've learned. You you talked about the. We'll talk about the formula of how they're doing these things. Um, how they do it to. You had mentioned how they do it to their own children, um, but. In doing the shows with Carolyn and um, Dan Duvall, they've talked about how all these people that have been contacting them to find help and how him himself and he works with Dr. Preston Bailey um, and some others to reach out and try to help as many as they can. But there's just too many. There's a lot of people that are waking up to being part of these families and also to the programming that are trying to break away, that are trying to find help. 
Um, and and there's just not a lot of, enough people out there to to provide this assistance. And so that's what they've been doing as of late to reach out and to try to bring others in. And you, um, the people that are trained, they're training and trying to train. They're not even requiring like some kind of professional degree, just something that shows that they've been involved and have provided this kind of assistance and know what they're doing. And, and, and so I think it's a, a very interesting time in that they are doing this kind of outreach. I think it's absolutely important. Uh, you were one of the few uh, that I had heard about doing this way back in the day. But what I want to ask you about is the things you have learned about the what Carolyn calls the establishment and also the plan. Um, and, oh, well, we'll pick it up on the other side. Hold on, friends. All right. Welcome back, everybody. And um, appreciate those of you that have taken the time to join us live. My guest for this afternoon, this evening is... Fritz Springmeyer. Fritz, I um, wanted to give you a chance to comment on what I was talking about before we went to the first break about the establishment as far as New World Order, their agenda, uh, what Carolyn re- uh, references as the plan, um, and the things that you might have learned. I know you, of course, I don't want you to talk about anybody that you are working with as far as name or anything like that like that but if you can share with us some of the things that you've learned in treating or helping um, many of the people that you do work with the kind of things that may have come up as far as you know um, that you can share with public about what the new world order is doing where they're planning on taking things uh, what the next step in the agenda is and um uh, because we've seen, you know, since 9-11 and 2001, uh, a step up in the police measures and the decimation of the, our constitutional liberties and the perpetuation of endless wars. And so um, anything that you could share uh, along those lines. Okay, well, <clears throat> let me take a step backward and talk about uh, something, uh, the previous thing that you had mentioned, and that was about how there's more people that are are starting to wake up and try to help with this. Right now, Zen, right now, there are millions of people that are programmed. There are tens of thousands of these pro- people that want help. Every day, it seems like I get two or three of these programmed multiple personalities these people begging me to help them, and I can't. Now, the number one thing that these people need, the number one thing, and this is what most people don't realize is important, uh, is they need a safe place. They need a physically and spiritually safe place. And I can't give that to them. And I don't know hardly anywhere else where they can get that to. And as far as people that are legitimate and sincere out there helping these people, there's, I only know a few, not even a handful. And um, the problem is, is just like in this area, there were a few actual professional therapists. We're talking about psychiatrists and psychologists that wanted to help this situation. And all of their, all of them got taken down. And, um, I can and what see it is, is, is the false memory syndrome people, uh, which is, which are, are part of the abuse system. The abusers created that, um, they will send somebody in and then this therapist will try to give them uh, treatment. And then they'll accuse the therapist of planting uh, false memories in them. And then the, the legal system will, uh, take them down and and uh, strip them of their credentials. So I've watched that here in our Portland area. The legitimate professional therapist got taken down. That's why you need people like myself who are good-hearted and are, are spiritual people <clears throat> uh, who are sincere to step up because 
as friends to these people, they can't they can't strip us of any professional credentials. Right. I mean, nobody can stop us from being friends with them, and that's what they need. Um, and and there's so few of us out there that understand the ins and outs. So yeah, I wanted to make that clear because that's something uh, you know if people want to con- do some good for the world here's a big area that really has a major influence and so that ties in with your next question which was what have i learned from these people and you know i learned uh quite a bit about uh the what the what they have programmed these people to do and there's Alice Janus programming is in in times programming. And so you see you see these like riots in Missouri uh, at Ferguson. That's an example of the type of thing that was programmed for these people to do. That's why when I see these things, I, I'm not so quick to jump and think that they're just spontaneous. Um one of the things that the abusers, these are the people that are, are conducting the mind control, the programmers are trying to get have happen, is they're trying to create a civil war in this country. And so, you know, you, you probably said this numerous times on your program, uh, ob chaos, you know, um, they out of chaos they want to bring order and they're the people that are creating the chaos and then they're the people that are going to bring in the order or another word for all of this is called uh hegelian dialectics you create the problem you come up with a solution and then out of all that a synthesis you know so like an example would be world war one you had the the uh, allies against the central powers and they created League of Nations. Out of right. World War II, you got the allies against the Axis, you create United Nations. Out of World War III, you create the the visible, open New World Order, you know. So another thing that they have planned is to flip all of these mind-controlled systems. What I mean by that is is all they have to do is is give an in-time activation code, and they could do this uh, on a mass basis. And all of these mind-controlled people that are ministers, that are are deacons, these people running around in the churches, uh, they will all be flipped and become Satanists. And so when they want to take down these churches, they will, the churchianity will fall so quick, everybody will be shocked. They they won't even know what hit them. Yeah, I've read That's, it. Uh, go ahead, Fritz. Yeah, well, it, it backs up that scripture that says, you know, uh, in, in, uh, Christ said, when he comes back, will I find faith? Like you were saying, you know, where things are are, are getting really bad and, they can even get worse. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I, I've read in their own words, you know, with the protocols, um, some of these think tank, um, like even the report from Iron Mountain and others, quiet weapons for a secret war, things like that, where they talk about how they're preparing for a time. It's like... Um, you know, for the order out of chaos that they're creating and setting things up, these endless wars, and um, now they're propagating, uh, supporting, and funding ISIS, and how they had done the same with Al Qaeda and the Taliban and and others, and so they're they're creating these boogeymen in order to pull them out of the shadows when it's necessary to create an enemy in order for to drive agenda for certain states. Um, the immigration and all of that now is, um, is causing a lot of turmoils in European countries and, you know, the, the flood of refugees from Syria and elsewhere and, and how also governments have allowed terrorists to infiltrate um, their, you know, their own countries 
and as a pretext for certain agenda to drive the the budgets for security um, and how they've perpetuated false flag terrorist acts in order to create the pretext and the, the premise for not only the destruction of civil liberties, but for also the, you know, funding and creating and pushing police state measures and the decimation of constitutional, uh, the constitution, habeas corpus rights. Now we have this whole alternate military tribunal system where they can basically label you a domestic terrorist or a patriot or a constitutionalist or a Christian and um, put you and turn you into this uh, indefinitely. I mean, you have no right, you know, habeas corpus rights to quick uh, um, jury trial or, or even to know what your charges are. It's just insane and how far they've brought it since 9-11. And, um, and so what do you, what do you kind of see on the horizon? And, um, cause it does seem like they're preparing for a time. And then when this time arrives, then they're going to allow things just to go nuts. And they want all the, the nihilists and the atheists and the communists to just rape, pillage and plunder. They want great slaughter. Uh, even with what, um, Albert Pike, uh, specifies in his, you know, the three world wars and how the, now the Christians and the the Muslim fanatics are being pinned against each other, and they want um, the Christians and the Muslims to wear each other out, and the the countries that support uh, those two sides to become decimated so much so that the communist and atheistic nations can then fill in the gap as far as power and prestige, and we always we already see how they've turn this country into a debtor nation and uh, when we used to not be and how we've been strapped with all this incredible debt borrowing from China and others, the Federal Reserve being a, not even a nationalistic type of bank and um, serving a private elitist group and and how they are just funding our own demise. It's, it's insane. But uh, anything along those lines as far as the agenda and uh, what you see coming down the horizon, what you're looking for? Well, <clears throat> these people that have been subjected to the trauma-based mind control are all at all, all levels of society, including the gutter. So Charlie Manson was a program multiple. <clears throat> and then during the 1960s, the CIA which, which you know, its branch of the programming was called MK Ultra. They were see during the 1950s they were perfecting doing this total mind control with individuals, and right. then they they morphed into the in the 60s they started experimenting with religious groups. So Charlie Manson goes in to San Francisco and he creates a little cult. And the people that were in his cult, these girls, they were under this trauma-based mind control, too. And so he calls himself Christ. So this is one of these, I can just see these CIA programmers kind of laughing. They took this piece of garbage, Charlie Manson, and they turned him into a Christ figure with these women that were subjected to the trauma-based mind control. Well, I mention this because... Charlie Manson would preach that there was going to be a time of helter skelter. And there's even some songs that came out of that era. Well, that's true. That was another word for this time of chaos you're talking about. And so working with people that have been subjected to the Illuminati mind control, listening to what they heard in meetings, looking at their type of programming, there is indeed this helter skelter Type period. Now, Charlie Manson and, and some of these other people, they were off on the timetable, and the timetable has been extended. The original timetable has been changed a couple times. So it, and 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 I kind of look at that as God coming into the mix 
and turn, uh, uh, upsetting their plans so that if they really want to see God, they can see, hey, we're not little gods like, like we claim we are because we can't even make our plans work out. So, uh, you know, they've been given notice uh, by the Almighty that uh, they're not the, the ones ruling this planet. They're not the ones running the universe. Um, so they've had to revise their timetable a few times. But yeah, it's definitely there. They're trying to bring it in. And, and so Merkel, who's the chancellor of Germany, she was the driving force to bring in all of these Muslims to Germany. And a lot of Germans are now like really upset because of what they've had to experience because the European uh, uh, decision makers bringing in all of these, these terrorists and troublemakers. And so now they've got a, a, a problem that's out of hand in Europe. Um, you know, and, and, and people can go online and see YouTube videos of these Muslims just tearing apart these European cities, raping the women and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And, um, and, and of course, you've, you've heard that uh, some of our leaders want to bring the same stuff to the United States. And so we'll see if they manage to do that or not. Um, and I'm sure that there's plenty of other ways they can create chaos besides bringing uh, in these Muslims. Yeah, well, it seems like, um, you know, this has been kind of an ongoing thing. You know, they said that since 9-11, we've had this war on terror and that we have to go fight them on their own soil. And yet the borders have remained wide open. And there have been reports, uh, numerous reports of you know, some of these fanaticists, these uh, Islamist fanaticists, coming across the border through the wide open southern and Canadian border and that, you know, they've been um, been building up kind of these these small, quiet, like, uh, sects here in the, um, these, like, terrorist camps right here in our own country and that they are indeed preparing for this same thing, this um, this bell to be sounded and the, the chaos um, to be created and so that they can, you know, bring this order out of chaos. And even the Bible talks about how there will be peace and come sudden destruction. And so, um, and so, yeah, I was, yeah go ahead. They've allowed cell groups in, they've allowed these terrorist cell groups now in every state. Right. It's gotten that pervasive. So, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see how it develops. Um, and we have our, our we have these uh, elite the the decision makers the, the you know the Illuminati. We have them to thank for all of this because this is part of the chaos that they're and, and they. The, one of the reasons why they love the, the bringing in the Muslims like this is they want to create religious wars. They want to uh, provoke the Christians and the Muslims to fight each other. And, and that just gives them all the more reason to say, oh, you know, anybody who uh, believes in their religion hardcore like this needs to be uh, dealt with. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to paint Christians as haters. And so a lot of people, a lot of the younger generation, and people have come up to me and talked to me about how Christians are are evil and that they just go around killing people and stuff. I, 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 it's so ridiculous, but they really believe it. Mm -hmm. And I want to state for the listening audience that I myself personally am not against any people or any um, any country or any nation. I believe there's good people in every country and every nation, but I certainly don't think that um, that as far as the you know what they're teaching with the fanatical 
Islamists and the funding of this extremist groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda, that the there is controlled opposition being established. And even though I know there's good people everywhere, I know that they are doing this on purpose and that what is happening here in this country, the reverse is happening in places like Iran and that um, the in, in the Middle East and that a lot of the wars of aggression, the wars of terrorism that have been funded by our leaders and perpetuated by our leaders because everybody's woken up to the fact that 9-11 Certainly, Iraq and Afghanistan didn't attack us on those days. They certainly didn't plant the bombs in those buildings uh, prior to the supposed hijacking of those airplanes. But um, but we're being pushed as a world, and that Satan uses every nation, gender, creed, and people, and color in order to manipulate and to create the controlled opposition in order to drive groups and to pin groups against one another. And so I don't want anybody to think that I'm only against Muslims or I'm only against uh, Christians or, you know, uh, whatever it is. I'm not against anybody. I think that there's good people everywhere, but that the lies have been perpetuated in order to lead us into these uh, wars of aggression. And it's all done to, as it says in all of their, you know, their their literature and all of the stuff that they've even released um, because they're laughing at us. They're not even trying to hide all this. The protocols are out there as a a document to assert global domination, to subvert and subject the people to decimate the, the masses of, and I don't believe that it's, you know, even though it's supposed to be, um, that we're supposed to think ill of only Jews, you know, the learned elders of Zion. I know that, again, it's not just one particular people, not one group, and that Satan works through all people, all nations, all colors, all creeds, all genders, all, you know, everything. Um, Fritz, do you want to comment on this before we go to the next break? Well, that's very well said. You know, people talk to me and ask me which group is it you know is it the catholics is it the jews you know and i say you can't put a label on this but i can say this jump in here there's so much that you know what you were talking about i i have so many comments but i just want to say one thing americans don't realize really what islam is all about because they people view something in terms of what they've experienced And Islam is not like Christianity. It's not just another group like Christianity. And I've been in these Islamic countries, and it's something really spooky. So uh, I don't want to mislead people to think, well, they're just another group like any other church down the road or something. And um, I have some Syrian friends. When I say Syrians, these are Syrian Americans that have been Americans for for generations but they still maintain ties with syria Mm -hmm. and i was curious how they were going to uh, react towards syrian immigration they don't want syrians coming in they know that these people have a lot of 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 evil infiltrators in there they are totally against it they they were saying telling people contact your 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 uh, representatives and tell them not to let these people in. Well, it's even worse than that because some of these people that are coming in, they're under the trauma-based mind control because this trauma-based mind control has gone to the Middle East and there's no way to detect whether they're evil or good. They could be the sweetest lady, but she could be a program multiple and there could be a trigger word said and, and this lady strap on a bomb and go blow something up. So there's no way you can vet them, not right. that they're even right. trying. And I will say this, that, um, yes, a lot of what is taught in connections to Islam are like with the jihadist principle, um, and that a lot of people, you know, it also teaches that, that it's okay to kill Christians, and they teach this in their own nations, and a lot of the propaganda that is taught even to their own children that they are raised in that manner. And so there is uh, absolutely this kind of difference. And, you know, with the wars between um, 
the Jewish people and the Palestinians, it's been an ongoing thing ever since 1948. You know, right when Israel became a, a nation, there's been uh, there were six nations, uh, you know, the Arab nations that were ready to go to war, and that has been um, a point of contention ever since that time, and is still ongoing. Uh, and now that we, because Again, we are funding ISIS, and we are funding, had been, as far as al-Qaeda and Taliban. The powers that be are representatives that have sold us out. Uh, They know exactly what they're doing. They're bringing forth the vision of Pike to to create this, um, to establish the New World Order as um, as the power base and to destroy America, to destroy many countries of the world, and also to fill the void with the communists and the atheists and the nihilists, uh, which, you know, being godless, that's the kind of people they want to rule. And that's the kind of people they are, too, because they don't believe in a god. They certainly don't think they're going to be judged in any way. Uh, And they think that um, they can do as they wish and that they're going to get away with all these things. Um, And, you know, they've got a rude awakening coming. And and that's also why they uh, are okay with you know, engaging in acts of pedophilia and traumatizing their own children and all the things that they do, writing off the death warrants of so many innocents. But anyways, we'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, Fritz, I wanted to give you a chance to comment on what I was talking about before we went to break, if you'd like to, Um, and then we can go into more detail on spend this hour talking about this agenda and also anything else that you'd like to bring up as far as you finding significant of your research and your studies of this, uh, uh, you know, as far as this current age. Okay. Refresh my memory as to specifically what you had in mind, uh, uh, Um, that we were discussing prior to the break? Well, I was just talking about how the governments, um, you know, fund the terrorist groups, and they they do this as a modus of operandi in order to bring out the boogeyman um, for a particular agenda, whether it's uh, wars of conquest or to create pretext. Like even with um, setting up these different people, Saddam Hussein and... um, uh, Moma, Gaddafi, you know, um, and then they they say that they're dictators, and then they go in and destroy these countries and fund the uh, the uh, opposition groups, which later turn out to have alliance with the terrorist elements that we then later have to fight. I mean, it's just insane. Uh, and then they give them millions, you know, even billions of dollars in arms and um and and they're just creating and funding these uh al qaeda terrorist networks and not even al qaeda but just the terrorist networks and and then they have to deal with them later and say oh we've got to spend more money to to fight the you know the terrorists well johnny todd in the 1980s he was somebody who had left the illuminati and he was saying that the Illuminati's plans was to to uh, create Muslim terrorists, and and over the years, and I have done so many thousands of hours of research, and try, uh, you know, and have a lot of people that uh, provide me information too, and I continually over the years keep seeing documentation about how. We train and finance the uh, terrorists. Uh, if you go back in history to, uh, and now I'm, I'm doing this off of the, my memory, but I think in 1921 was when MI6 created the Muslim Brotherhood, and so uh, you know the uh, the elite through their intelligence agencies and through through the United Grand Lodge. Um, have been sending orders down to uh, different um, Muslim factions. And um, 
So this has been going on for a long time. It's not something that just started in the 90s or something. But like I say, the uh, British uh, intelligence MI6, which is extremely powerful around the world and works for the directly for the Illuminati, they created the Muslim Brotherhood. And then our government in recent years have given the Mo Muslim Brotherhood tens of millions of dollars maybe hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I don't know the exact figure, but I've seen, I've seen documentation on it, and it's just incredible how much money we've handed these people to, uh, to become the boogeyman, like you're saying. Now, the, uh, uh, Dolores was telling me that somebody in the chat room had a question on the Amish, and so I wanted to switch gears, switch channels here, and answer their question. Yeah, this, please. Uh, relates to what we've been talking about, but they wanted to know uh, about the infiltration within the Amish. Now, I was Amish. I was a member in five different Amish communities, and I have visited dozens of Amish communities. I'm one of the uh, most well-informed people on uh, the Amish. Uh, the Amish are very close-minded you can live next door to them and you will think that they're wonderful people, but they're not going to tell you the uh, drama and dirt of what's going on in their church districts. You know, so I'm one of the, and for years I haven't talked about it either. You know, and I still don't talk a lot about it. I mean, I'm just, I'm not somebody that likes to gossip about things, but definitely one of the things that I had to expose and I first came out about it in my my formula book, which uh, I think was written in '96. I, I I decided I needed to go public because what happened was is during the Vietnam War, the uh, Amish were IW, their conscientious objectors, and the U.S. government. Uh, said, okay, we'll let you be a conscientious objector if you work in the hospitals. Well, some of these hospitals were actually mental hospitals. And what happened was, is the government grabbed these Amish boys and subjected them to mind control. And so I was in the Amish communities at the tail end of the Vietnam War. And, and there, they were saying, our boys are coming back and we don't even recognize who they are. They've, their their personalities have been changed. Well, yes, they got subjected to this trauma-based mind control. But there was already a problem within the Amish communities before that. And I got to know Amish neighbors who were multiple personalities. And um, they were some of them were even having to go for therapy for MPD. And then when I started working years later with uh, people that were in the Illuminati, they started telling me how the years, many years ago, the Illuminati managed to infiltrate the Amish communities. And it's, I can understand how they were able to do that because the Amish are like a box that nobody can look into. But within the Amish communities, you've got boxes within boxes. Like in Bowling Green, Missouri, there was a group of Amish families that moved in to Bowling Green area. And the, the general settlement there didn't even know what these families were about. They were like secretive to themselves, you know. So you got boxes within boxes within boxes, you know. Even the Amish don't even know what some of their people in their communities are doing. They're so secretive. Well, it's within these 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 little inner groups that you've got some really nasty Satanism going on. And uh, there's settlements, there's Amish settlements in back like in Ohio where they're, they're, witchcraft and Satanism is just running rampant. And... Um, uh, you know, uh, one of my friends, David Luthi, he was uh, somebody uh, that came from the outside that joined the Amish, and he created uh, the Amish Historical Library where he collected hundreds of books and all kinds of PhD 
uh, master theses and stuff about the Amish, all kinds of studies. And when you look through those studies, you can see that they even have the statistics on some of these settlements, these Amish settlements, where there's some really wacky things going on, really wacky. We're talking about uh, um, child molestation, um, witchcraft, and all kinds of stuff running rampant. So unfortunately, I, I had to you know, the Amish in general are really good people, but <coughs> it goes back to that scripture. How does Satan hide himself? As an angel of light, you know, and the Amish were the best cover to, you know, everybody thinks that they're wonderful people. So if you're going to create an assassin, you know, what a better place to to have them live within an Amish community who would suspect an Amish boy of being an assassin. You're right. Right. Uh, and and not, uh, not only does this extend to the Amish, I'm really familiar with the Mennonites too, because I've, I've attended Mennonite churches in a, min, a number of States. Um, and so recently in this last year, I've been working with uh, some Mennonites who unfortunately were, victims of the trauma-based mind control and their denominations. And uh, so I even got into, we were identified people that were part of the programming abuse system within the Mennonite churches. And, and so, yeah, the Mennonites and Amish, unfortunately, have been uh, victims of the same kind of stuff. It's, it's widespread. It's everywhere, Zen. Yeah, they don't spare anybody. Um, and like no. you said, <laughs> why not, you know, hide them in these kind of communities and, um, and basically have them from every group, you know, so you can pin who you want against who to create strife. Um, another question from the chat room, Michael asks if you could comment on gang stalking. Oh, it's a bad problem. And I get so many people contacting me for help with their gang gang stalking. I don't know what people think I'm going to do to 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 help them. I'm one little person out here, you know, that's been beat down by the system myself pretty bad. Only by the grace of God am I still here, you know. Right. And I don't know what they think, what resources they think I have. Um to help them spare them from this gang stalking. But, you know, Zen, uh, and I, and I've been having people that were victims of this for, for many years, share their, their stories with me. And basically uh, if I was to get down to the, the kernel of things, you got some sadistic whacked out people out there that like, torturing other people right it's just crazy i mean you would you, you ask yourself why are they tormenting these people well just because they can and they love to torment people you know that's one of the reasons why i resigned from the military when i was at west point um i i left the uh, west point as a conscientious objector one of the reasons why is is because i saw that all the sadistic uh, cadets were, were the ones that were getting promoted. Right. And, uh, you got some really sadistic people out there that are warped and they, they will, you know, some of these generals will send you into battle to let you get killed just for the fun of, of watching you die, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, and, and so unfortunately that's the world we live in is, is there's some really warped people out there. Yeah. Um, can you describe or detail gang stalking um, for those that might not know what it is and how it's being perpetuated? Well, they, they just make the, they drive the person insane uh, everywhere the person goes. He's just uh, people that are tormenting him and, and to the point that the person becomes paranoid and everything that, you know, the abusers may cough and spit on the sidewalk, 
So it gets to the point that the poor victim, anytime somebody coughs around him, he thinks that it's somebody in the cult trying to harass him. So they become their own worst enemy in that they they get to the point that they're so paranoid that uh, they will terrify themselves. And, and uh, uh, you know, one of the things that's happening, too, that goes along with this is, you know, I've had a lot of people that have uh, um, shared with me about the implants. Some of these implants are obviously just to torment them. There's no sane reason. They're not using these people for any uh, secret spy operation or anything. They're just tormenting them. And mm -hmm. you would go, well, why are they harassing them? Why, why do they, you know, they put an implant into their genitalia where they can, they can give them pain or they... They, they give them voices and you might ask, well, why are they doing this? You know, one lady, I had two ladies come from Texas years ago uh, here to Oregon and spent about, oh, maybe three weeks with us. Well, one of the ladies eventually got the, physically got the implant, one of her implants out and they were, they were putting voices in her head. But what, what were these voices saying? Just tormenting the person, just tormenting them. And you, you would go, well, why would anyone do that? It's because these people that are running things are really screwed in the head. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're just, it's just like people are like voodoo dolls to them where they just stick the pins in them and just for the fun of it. Right. And, um, you know, they're, they're trying to, um, perfect technique to drive people crazy, to make them paranoid. Uh, you know, when certain people say that, oh, well, they're out to get me. Well, sometimes they absolutely are. And, um, and that's the, the reality of it. But yet, you, who can you go to, you know? Um, and a lot of times police and justices and anybody that you can tur turn to, child protective services, uh, they're all run by the same people, and so there's no avenue to find relief, uh, you know, other than maybe moving and relocating and just going to a different place in space. Because um, otherwise, I, I just don't see it stopping. But um, yeah, the, it's crazy the the times. I would also say that you know a lot of that stuff making people hear voices and everything. Um, it, the, it has to do also with this whole ancient alien agenda, which is on the horizon and which I see with the whole ancient alien, as far as the history channel, um, it's the next step step in the game. And, um, even I believe it was Carol Rosen. She gave a video testimony talking about how she was working before Werner von Braun had died and he had shared with her that there would be this end game where they would try to establish that the uh, fallen angels are our creators and um and that they are also our saviors and and so many people are willing to to buy into that now and are and have bought into it and are um worshiping so much so that there's a resurgence in some of the old pagan religions, people are praying to these Sumerian gods or, you know, the ancient gods and goddesses of, uh, of various pagan cultures. And it's, it's crazy. Um, to me, it's crazy, especially since I know as far as scripture, that it is indeed this phenomenon that these beings are nothing more than the fallen angels, the rebel angels, which, uh, the book of Enoch elaborates in so much detail on, uh, can you comment on any of that, Fritz, and if you've uh, investigated well, any yeah. of that? Yeah, you're definitely uh, on the right track there. In working with people that had been programmed by the Illuminati, they they talked about this uh, fallen angel agenda. And then actually, and and this might shock some people, but some of the people that are still active in the Illuminati that are, are glad to be in it, have just outright told me about this agenda. They're not, they, they got so much arrogance and, and 
self-assurance that they think that it's going to be pushed through, even though there's a few of us that know about it and are dissenters, they think that they got the general population buffaloed enough and under enough mind control that, that they're going to ram this agenda through and people are going to worship these, these aliens uh, as our saviors and our creators and and they're going to they're going to rule this planet. And, uh, you know, uh, I think God's going to have his own say in this. I don't think he's just going to let them do whatever they want. But they seem mm-hmm. to think that they're going to be able to push this through, even if a few a few people like myself know full well what they're trying to do. Right. Exactly. And um, they're arrogant. They're totally haughty and prideful and they think that we're just um, useless eaters and uh, too dumb to know and even if we did know that there's nothing that we can do anyways and so um, and I I do think that as far as the new world order that you know things are going to perpetuate until uh, the most high comes again the the sun comes again and separates the the wheat from the tares and um and then you know takes the judgment seat and and then the righteous will uh reap their reward and those uh that served the kings and the new world order elites and thought that they could do as they wish and engage in just vile abominable actions such as the the pedophilia or hunting you know even hunting innocents and you know, I don't know if you heard about the the hunting parties. Uh, there was a story that just recently came out um, where it was talking about the royals and how they um, they release you know these vagrants or or homeless people or young teens that are drug addicts have nowhere else to go. They just release them onto the streets and I mean uh, into the woods and they have these hunting parties where they take their uh, phalluses as as trophies. Um, and then they have these grand sex parties where they're engaging in things like uh, the drinking of blood and cannibalism and things of that nature. I mean, it's just really twisted and just almost beyond belief the kind of things that are being perpetuated. And yet uh, there's multiple witnesses um, talking about these things and relating these things uh, from these families that were also, you know, from um, part of this whole agenda. Uh, Have you heard about that and comment on that? I've been exposing that for the last 20 years. Um, Can you speak more on that? Some of the people that that are trying to get out of the Illuminati, they don't like, they've been forced to be in these hunts and they don't like it. They don't Mm -hmm. like being forced, you know, and when they have, when they have, when they've had to kill on these hunts and then they show a little bit of remorse, then the others will say, well, just suck it up, you know, and things like that. Well, they don't, they, you know, there's, there's people that are intrinsically good deep down, even though they've been mind controlled and they don't want to participate in these things. And so, yeah, I have heard about these hunts and I've been exposing them for, for 20 years. There's so much to expose. It's not one of the topics that I talk about a lot, right. but I've been fully familiar with it from eyewitnesses for a long time. Right. Uh, well, let me get you to comment on this as well, because there was a book that was released, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with it, uh, the Franklin cover-up, which talked about how these kids were being taken out of these um, these homes um, for you know the foster kids and young boys and young girls and how they were being given drugs and uh, trafficked all over the the country, even to high-level politicians um, as sex slaves, and also how they were, um, they were forced to engage in these satanic rituals where they would, you know, kill innocent babies, they would kidnap children off of the streets, uh, provide them to these elites for sacrifices and how their foster parents and people that took them in, you know, they were blown away until they just heard the story over and over and over. And um, because the child protective services and 
again, police and judges and sheriffs are part of these Masonic brotherhoods, you know, there was nobody that they can turn to. And then uh, this Senator John DeCamp, he came in and decided to represent them uh, pro bono. And and even he was um, defamed and, uh, you know, they tried to, um, people like uh, Joe Cadori, who was um, a, a district attorney, I believe, trying to represent these kids. He and his son were blown out of the out of the skies. Um, he was an airline pilot. But um, let me get you to comment on this quickly, Fritz, and then we'll pick it up on the other side of this break. This next well, break. sadly, Zen, there's been hundreds of witnesses that have tried to expose this kind of stuff. And they either get sent to prison, they get killed, they, the judges order them to be uh, sent to mental hospitals and drugged to where they can't even uh, talk. They have, they have come down hard to suppress the eyewitnesses that have tried to expose this kind of stuff. Yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So it's sad. sad. And they do that, you know, like even uh, Troy Bonner, I believe is his name, he was... Um, working with them but then they threatened his family and his brother and he re retracted and so they were able to get him to break and when they discredited him they were able to um basically say that the other girl had perjured herself and they locked her up for wanting to testify and they were you know they were talking about a, a, being even being pimped out to like um George H. W. Bush in, in the president, and uh, there's stories of um, H. W. Bush and how he was involved with this kid named um, Jeff Gannon, who others thought he was this other kid named Johnny Gosh that had been kidnapped, and he was basically made into a male prostitute, and he was visiting H. Uh, w. in the White House and spent many a night there when. That kind of thing, you know, only goes to uh, not even to the highest level dignitary. So um, it, it's crazy the kind of stuff. And all this was broken, uh, even in the Washington Times and stuff. And so um, the craziness, insanity that's going on. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody, for final segment. Um, I wanted to ask you, Fritz, if you would elaborate a little bit on. Um, what we were talking about before we went to break, uh, just about um, give us some details as to the rituals, the kind of abuse. Um, of course, you don't have to be graphic, but, you know, um, let me see. And if I, if I can't bring him on, then I will just finish up the rest of the show. Um, really weird. But anyways... Okay. Okay. So at least you have me and let me, cause I, I don't think maybe he reset his. And if I see him come back on, then I'll try to bring him on to call with us. But until then, I'm going to just uh, finish this out since at least I am connected to the server and able, uh, able to finish this um, as far as the show. Anyways, I apologize for the inconvenience, and those of you that um, have taken the time to join us, I was hoping that we could elaborate a little bit more on the insanity of the, you know, as far as the Illuminati and the kind of things that they have been perpetuating in bringing forth their agenda. Uh, next week, I will do a follow-up on the Paradise series that I had done um, a couple of weeks ago, which I know a lot of you have been interested in that as topic. And also um, the incredible information that not only connects to that, because I've got enough for even a couple of more shows, but, um, but Flatwater will be joining us also at some point to talk about some of his latest research and for those that have read and looked into this uh, particular Hollow Earth book called the um, called the Smoky God, 
it's interesting in how it relates to the topic of a paradise and hyperborea. And so we'll pick up on that next week. And then I've got um, others that have been asking for me to bring on the hijacker to talk about how uh, he and I were, you know, he was instrumental in leading me to revelation as far as far as the topic of um, the flat earth. And so I'll, I'll bring him on and we'll talk about that and share um, some dialogue in that regard as well. And then I've got Dr. Joy Pugh going to join with us as well at some point. All right. All right, Fritz is back on, so let me uh, let me see if I can bring him into. Yeah, call. it's not letting me connect to him. All right, one second, everyone. Can you type in? Huh. Okay, one second. I just got to search out his and then bring him on again. All right, he should be able to join us now. Fritz, are you there? Finally. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened. Everything just kind of froze for a second, and I had to restart the whole call. And you have to do it in a certain order in order for the uh, the sound quality to be at its best. And so I had to but connect Zen, again with the server. Yeah. Zen, it wasn't entirely on your end. Oh, uh, really? Okay. For, first, what happened is, is when we came back from the break, you were garbled. I was hearing like every fifth word. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then we lost internet over here. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what it was. All right. Um. So... It was happening on your end and our end both. Okay. All right. Well, at least we got it resolved and we can make uh, the best of this last 20 minutes. Uh, what I was asking you about and what I wanted to get you to uh, elaborate upon a little bit is, can you describe um, a little bit more as far as the the rituals and the kind of um, uh, abuse and the kind of mind control that they are doing to people, of course, I don't want you to get uh, overly graphic, but if you could, for maybe those that have not heard about this kind of thing, and if this is new, maybe they've never read the uh, Franklin cover-up, the kind of satanic abuse the and the rituals that they are involved in. Okay, well, uh, satanic ritual abuse goes by the name SRA, and... Um, It's pretty prevalent. It's just like the Christians I was talking to, and this is a hardcore church that they're members of. I I was just talking to them um, before I I came online, and their church is just chuck full of people that have, have experienced SRA. So it's a lot more widespread than people can imagine. Um... And it's just like you might imagine it being, uh, you know, if, if you if you look at the movies where they depict this kind of stuff, it, it's depicting the way it is, you know. Look at the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Right. He was actually showing the way things are, you know. It got him in trouble, too. He showed so much. Right. Um, recently... Uh, there's been this widespread uh, um, scandal at Hampstead. Hampstead is a, a suburb or a city. It's actually a city um, in the greater London area where the, the most, the largest number of British millionaires live there. And the children are saying that they're being subjected to this SRA, as well as the mind control that goes along. And so the British officials, the police and whatnot, are really trying hard to put a clamp uh, to control the scandal. So, you know, uh, 
it's it's going it's going on everywhere and um uh talking about london for a minute uh which relates to some of the other stuff that we were talking about uh some of these younger hacker types these computer geeks they were tracking down where these isis messages were coming from and guess where they tracked it? it they tracked it to the computers of mi5 in london it does not so, surprise me so you know isis is just a front for these people right um yeah, you know, uh, the, you know, to describe to describe the rituals, it, it, it's it's just uh, I don't see any purpose. I mean, it's just you know people that are going to wear these hooded costumes and chant, and uh, sometimes they're sky clad. They 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 got the ritual dates my books uh give the rituals and and the ritual dates a lot of these rituals are done for purposes of mind control and um uh you know like one of the in some of the rituals they force the participants to actually kill someone mm-hmm. and um that does all kinds of things to the person's mind but it also is sort of like you know, there's no statute of limitations on murder. So once you've done it, you're now part of the group and you can't get out. Right. It's the same kind of mentality as people were telling me, you know, when I was in prison, I, I would talk with gang bangers and they would talk about how uh, and to join a gang, you had to do something that the gang would tell you to do. So these young, like 12 year olds, that want to join their neighborhood gang, the the gang would tell them, okay, you see that old lady over there? Well, go shoot her. And then they do. They So you have these this meaningless crime going on where somebody drives by and just shoots someone. And, and they're doing it to join the gang. You know, it, it's that kind of thing. So once you, once you've done that, you're part of, of, you know, They've got something on you and, and you're, you know, it's, it's, it, it really these, these satanic groups are just criminal. They're just like mafias. Uh, they're just criminal organizations. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, there have been a lot of people that coming out of these particular families, even Carolyn Hamlin, the series that I've done with her and, uh, Dan Duvall, she, has testified as to the kind of ritual abuse that goes on and that is perpetuated with even these the the own children of these particular bloodlines and the the kind of abuse on all levels mental emotional sexual and spiritual and um men, no, I said mental but um anyways physical uh, all these different levels of abuse and so uh, and I Remember the testimony of Savali, which was another one that had come out and talked about some of the details on this. But it seems to align with, you know, what was revealed in the Franklin cover up. And uh, even that book talked about uh, the involvement of these Catholic priests. And and that, and that was at a time when none of them had, you know, it hadn't broken out as far as all the. Uh, the pedophilia and the things, the sexual um, abuse and the the kind of victims that were widespread all over the world that were involved in being victimized by these uh, the the Catholic priesthood and stuff, and so um, that was also you know confirming witness to the authenticity of the the victims as far as talking about these things. Um, We've got just about, I think, uh, about nine minutes remaining, Fritz, and I want to give you a chance to talk about anything that you think is relevant, significant, that you would like to share uh, over this, you know, last portion of time. Okay, well, I think one of the things that I can do for the listeners is if they're interested in these kind of subjects, whenever I get a chance 
you know, it, I, I try to do it on a daily basis, but I'm extremely busy, so I don't always get that done. But I give messages and articles on a daily basis on my blog. So even if you're not a Facebook follower, you can go to pintracks.com and see my articles there. So like recently, you know, you were asking about the rituals. Re recently, I exposed a temple, an Illuminati, I think it's an Illuminati temple near here. It's it's called the Temple of Aculus Anubis, where they, they worship a Sekhmet. Well, Sekhmet is an Egyptian goddess that's similar to Kali and, and who's very bloody. And so somebody asked me if I think that they do uh, human sacrifices down in the tunnels underneath this, this, uh, this temple. And I said, I sure think so, because if, if they're worshiping Sekhmet, you know, but uh, the people that own the property... And I mean, this is a really creepy place. The people that own it, they just say, well, we just like Egyptian stuff. You know, supposedly they're just like uh, uh, people that like Egypt, ancient Egyptian artifacts. Well, that doesn't explain why there's hooded people doing rituals on the property and why if you come around it, you're followed, you know, uh, a black car will follow people or uh, you know, somebody in the that just lives in the neighborhood was. I found that out today. Was saying that uh, you know they they had walked down the the road where this is at, and they got followed by a car. Well, if this is so benign, why are, why is, why are they uh, so worried about anybody coming around? You know, right? But uh, uh, what's important for the people? Well, there's a lot of subjects that are going on, like you've been you've been addressing, Zen. There's so much that's coming at us. It's it's kind of hard to say what's the most important for right. the listener. But of course, we've got uh, we we've, we've got here in Oregon, we've got this Harney County standoff, and I've written a couple articles that that are on my blog about that. I've talked about the world's economy imploding. That's important. And, um, you know, uh, uh, there's all kinds of economic red flags, uh, problems in China with their stock market. You know, here, here the other day, they, when the stock market started, it started crashing. And in a few minutes, the Chinese government had to uh, st stop the, the stock market for that day. Well, that's happened a number of times. And, and so all around the world, we see these kind of things happening. And um, so it's just that it, it's just like uh, the uh, Matthew 24 has told us, you right. know, we're going to hear wars, rumors of wars. There's going to be all of these different things coming at us. And it, it's it's a time where people need to ask themselves, what is really the foundation? What's important in my life? They need to get back and make things right with the good Lord. They need to, to love God and realize that our creator is a loving creator. They need to, to find out what it means to be people of faith. They need to get back to these things. And because that's what's important. Right. And um, uh, these things can, our problems can draw us closer to God or they can take us away. And hopefully people will allow these difficult times to draw them closer to God because uh, we, we need to look at the bigger picture. Yes, you know, I agree. When you look at a picture, you don't look at just the corner of it. Right. And the bigger picture is, is that uh, oh, we're after after we're here uh, when we die? You know, there's there's more to this whole thing than just death. Right. You know, we're going to we're we're going to stand before our Creator, and so people need to start thinking about these things, and that's really where it's important. Absolutely. So, oh, yeah. I, uh, Fritz. For those that don't know, can you? 
elaborate just a little bit more? What is the militia standoff about there? What what's the you know what what's all that about? Well, uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and to describe it in a few minutes is is really difficult because surprisingly right. there's a lot of issues but the original issue that came from it is it goes back to agenda 21 the government is basically trying to take all these ranchers land and there's uranium and platinum on on the land but it's more than that you know this in that they want to take the people away from the countryside and shove us into little right. In little spaces that can be easily controlled. Mm. And so it's part of Agenda 21. The ranchers are carrying the brunt of it. And so there were there were um, some some ranchers out there that had burned some property. Well, uh, you and I know that um, that these were the Hammonds, um, Dwight and Stephen Hammond. And you and you probably know. Uh, I for, know firsthand because I I farmed in Kansas, and we would burn the weeds off the land. Right. And so they were burning their land, and for that they were um, the federal government called that a crime, and uh, then the judge didn't give the federal government. Uh, what they wanted, they wanted to, they wanted these two ranchers to get a lot of time, and the judge didn't give them a lot of time. Well, in the 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 government had made a deal with the ranchers, but then when they when the judge didn't sentence them harshly like the government expected, then the government broke their deal and appealed it. And they weren't really supposed to do that because they had, the government had waived their right to appeal whatever the judge did. But the government does whatever they want. Right. So they they gave them a statutory minimum of five years under a terrorist act. They branded oh, them gosh. terrorists. Well, these ranchers weren't terrorists for burning burning weeds on their property. Um so that was the initial catalyst that created this Harney County standoff. But there's a whole bunch of issues beyond that. And so uh, the BLM, and the BLM is the Bureau of Land Management. It's a federal entity that owns, or actually it doesn't own, it just controls an, an eighth of the land of the United States. Yeah, they, own, they control a lot of the United States. And they issue permits to ranchers to, to graze their cattle on their land. And in fact, there's like 18,000 of these leases and, and permits that are given to cattlemen every year. And uh, so the, the ranchers of the Bundy Group have taken over a BLM uh, building and they're saying that they want the, the BLM land return to the county there and so the fbi is now 